Here is another example of how to find the definite integral's value by definition by using the limit of a Riemann sum. This example is very similar to exercise problems we have in uh, class. So let's try to see how we can actually solve this problem by using the definition of a definite integral. Now if we look at the interval over here, um, we have interval is um, a, b, over here we have between 0 and 3. That's one of the easier cases because a is equal to 0. So now let's first find out what's going to be the length of the sub-interval if we divide the interval into n pieces. We know this delta x over here, the base length, and we know it's going to be b minus a over n. So we see this is 3 minus 0 over n, and that's going to be simply 3 over n. Okay. Now after we do this, we need to find out the coordinates of sample points. We are going to use the right end points. So we say uh, these are the right end points, sample points x, i, star. And we have a sequence of them, and um, according to our setup, this, this is a starting point, and this is how many sub-intervals you have. So this sample point is simply going to be 0 plus um, 3i over n, and that's what we have, 3i over n. And we need to evaluate the height, f of xi star. And your function is 2 plus 3x squared, so you put this xi star inside over here, and that's going to be 2 plus 3, and then we have 3i over n squared. If you want to simplify a little bit, that's going to be fine. That's 2 plus 27. Um, and then we have um, i squared over n squared. And that's what we have. Now, according to the definition, this definite integral is the limit when n going to infinity. The partition becomes finer and finer, right? And then we have this um, sigma over here. i goes from 1 to n. It's a sum of approximate areas of those stripes, and we have base times height, and we have base is delta x times height is f of x i star. So we plug in the values we have, and then we have n going to infinity, and sigma i from 1 to n, and then we have 3 over n, and then the value over here is 2 plus 27, and i squared over n squared. Okay. That's the setup. Now we are going to try to find the sum. Then we take the limit. And because this is just sum, we can regroup them. And this is the regrouping part. And also remember, when we are taking the sum over here, i is the index, n is fixed. And then so we can actually um, have something like this, um, 6 over n i goes from 1 to n over here, and then we have another sum, and we have i goes from 1 to 3 times 27, it's going to be um, 81, so we have 81 over here, and then divided by n cubed, because we have n multiplied by n squared, and then we have i squared, that's what we have. This in these two sums, i is the index, n is really a constant, so we pull the term about constants out, n goes to infinity, and then we have um, 6 over n and sigma i goes from 1 to n, 1, and then plus 81 over n cubed, and then sigma i squared. Okay, Now, i goes from 1 to n. Sometimes it's not so easy to see that i goes from 1 to n, 1 is really equal to n, because you have n copies of 1 to add them up. Okay, And sigma i from 1 to n, this is a familiar formula now. It's n, n plus 1, and 2, n plus 1, and over 6. So now we 
put these formulas inside, we have the following. It's equal to limit, n is approaching infinity, and then we have 6 over n times n, and then we have 81 over n cubed multiplied by n, n plus 1, and 2n plus 1 over 6. Okay. Now we can do some cancellation over here. n and n is cancelled, and this n over here now becomes 2. Okay. So we have now the following limit, limit n going to infinity, and here is just 6, a constant. And then here we have 81 divided by 6, it's going to be 27 over 2. And then we have from here, and that's what we have over here. We have still have two n's, so we have n plus 1, and 2n plus 1, and then we have over here um, n squared. Okay. And let's look at this limit over here. What's going to be this limit? Now we can separate these problems over here, n plus 1, and 2n plus 1, and over n squared. There are different ways to do this, but this is something we can see, that um, we can distribute essentially this n squared, one copy to n plus 1, and other one is going to be 2n plus 1, and here is, this is the same thing. And the first limit is going to be simply 1, because limit n going to infinity, we have 1 plus 1 over n multiplied by 2 plus 1 over n. So we simply have the limit of 2. So that's what we have. So now we put all these things together. We have n going to infinity, 6 plus 27 over 2 and times 2. Oh, oh this limit over here is just a constant now. So we have 6, 33. That's the final, the, the final answer. All right, and so what we have eventually is from 0 to 3, and 2 plus 3x squared dx is equal to 33.